Leslie pushed back her shirt sleeve, and as she reached for an olive, I noticed a rubber bracelet on her left wrist. Is that a watch? I asked. No, she told me. It's a Fitbit. You sync it with your computer, and it tracks your physical activity. I leaned closer, and as she tapped the thickest part of it, a number of glowing dots rose to the surface and danced back and forth. It's like a pedometer, she continued, but updated and better. The goal is to take 10,000 steps per day, and once you do, it vibrates. I forked some salami into my mouth. Hard? No, she said, it's just a tingle. A few weeks later, I bought a Fitbit of my own and discovered what she was talking about. Ten thousand steps, I learned, amounts to a little more than four miles for someone my size. It sounds like a lot, but you can cover that distance over the course of an average day without even trying, especially if you have stairs in your house and a steady flow of people who regularly knock, wanting you to accept a package or give them directions or just listen patiently as they talk about birds which happens from time to time when I'm home in West Sussex. One April afternoon, the person at my door hoped to sell me a wooden bench. It was bought, he said, for a client whose garden he was designing. Last week she loved it, but now she's decided to go with something else. In the bright sunlight, the fellow's hair was as orange as a popsicle. The company I ordered it from has a no-return policy, so I'm wondering if maybe you'd like to buy it. He gestured toward an unmarked van, idling in front of the house, and seemed angry when I told him that I wasn't interested. You could at least take a look before making up your mind, he said. I closed the door a couple of inches. That's okay. Then, because it's an excuse that works for just about everything, I added, I'm American. Meaning, he said. We stand up a lot, I told him. Oldest trick in the book, my neighbor, Thelma, said when I told her about what had happened. That bench was stolen from someone's garden, I guarantee it. This was seconded by the fellow who came to empty our septic tank. Pikeys, he said. Come again? Tinkers, he said. Pikeys. That means gypsies, Thelma explained, adding that the politically correct word is travelers. I was traveling myself when I got my Fitbit. And because the tingle feels so good, not just as a sensation, but also as a mark of accomplishment, I began pacing the airport rather than doing what I normally do, which is sit in the waiting area, wondering which of the many people around me will die first, and of what. I also started taking the stairs instead of the escalator, and avoiding the moving sidewalk. Every little bit helps, said my old friend Dawn, who frequently eats lunch while hula-hooping and has been known to visit her local Y three times a day. She had a Fitbit as well, and swore by it. Others I met weren't quite so taken. These were people who had worn one until the battery died. Then, instead of recharging it, which couldn't be simpler, they'd stuck it in a drawer, most likely with all the other devices they'd lost interest in over the years. To people like Dawn and me, people who were obsessive to begin with, the Fitbit is a digital trainer, perpetually egging us on. During the first few weeks that I had it, I returned to my hotel at the end of the day, and when I discovered that I'd taken a total of, say, 12,000 steps, I'd go out for another 3,000. But why? Hugh asked when I told him about it. Why isn't 12,000 enough? Because, I told him, my Fitbit thinks I can do better. I look back at that time and laugh, 15,000 steps, ha, oh, that's only about seven miles, not bad if you're on a business trip or you're just getting used to a prosthetic leg. In Sussex, though, it's nothing. Our house is situated on the edge of a rolling downland, a perfect position if you like what the English call rambling. I'll follow a trail every now and then, but as a rule, I prefer roads, partly because it's harder to get lost on a road, but mainly because I'm afraid of snakes. 